that's so cool that you actually took advantage of Napster because, I mean, I was mm-hmm. pretty young back then, but I mean, you know that. And yeah, what I remember is yeah. like bands hated it. Like, like let's say like bands like Metallica were like all against it and stuff like that. But right. So, mm-hmm. so this is how this is how I used it. I would I'd hop on Napster and I and I'd try to find out who had my records, you know. And then I would say, hey, how'd you hear about Cindy Alexander? And they would tell me, you know, mp3.com or what was the other one? It was um, MySpace, Mm -hmm. you know, something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. I said, "Um, I'm Cindy Alexander. It's it's nice to meet you. Thanks for listening to my music. And they're like, there's no way you're Cindy Alexander. She wouldn't have a dial-up connection, which I did. I was like dial-up on AOL. (laughs) And um, I'm like, no, no, it's really me. And I would connect with people and then encourage them to, you know, if they, if they liked what they heard, maybe to support me in, in other ways, you know, share my music, maybe purchase a CD or a t-shirt, um, come to a show. So it was always, you, I couldn't fight it. You know, I, it wasn't, it wasn't worth it. And the problem is like today, especially the younger generations, including you, you probably don't need to pay for music, right? Mm-hmm. So, but when you love someone's art, there's other ways to support them nowadays. There's Patreon, which I love. I love my Patreon because it's not just about music. It's about connecting and we do Zoom calls and we, um, you know, I I do live streams and they have all my behind the scenes footage. They have all the demos to my records. Um, They can request songs and I'll cover them and put them on there. So there's different ways to monetize, which we have to, this is our career. I mean, I have to put food on the table. I've got children. I can't, you know, take away from that. So I have to figure out how to monetize, but at the same time, acknowledge that art nowadays, so much of it is freely accessible. So how do we, how do we work with that to our advantage and go, okay, you found me. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, you've, you've helped me, you're listening and that's why I make music. So now how can we make this a mutually beneficial situation? Yeah. That's, that's, that's really fascinating because I mean, let, let's get into that, but also how, how do you know to make that move back then 98, 99, when, when it was all of a sudden you, was there anyone telling you to do it or were just some uh, like intuition you had like oh this seems like a good idea it's interesting that you're asking me this now um I did have um, a friend who was signed to a label at the time and he he gave me a lot of direction that was interesting because like I learned what worked for him and what didn't work for him and that's somebody named Kevin Montgomery who you might know he he plays around the UK Hmm. um I had been taking a marketing class at uh, UCLA extension, and it was taught by the head of marketing for AM Records. And they had us go to a show of their artist, which at the time was Kevin Montgomery. And I met him. You know, here's the problem. Now, this is what happens during COVID quarantine. My daughter has just walked in and she's <laughs> just giving me hot chocolate. And she's oh. trying to tell me she's on a break from school and she wants her hot chocolate. Okay, mommy's doing an interview. And this is kind of awkward. <laughs> so when <laughs> dad can make you some hot chocolate. Otherwise, when I'm done, I'll make you some. Okay, honey? And if you can close the door, that would be great. <laughs> that's totally fine. Okay, so that's real life. Well, yeah, um, totally. Anyway, so Kev, I, I learned a lot from Kevin. He was always really good at marketing his own stuff. Um, and, you know, you, you meet other other artists online that are doing what you're doing. But my... <sighs> I'd like to think I was ahead of the head of the curve on some of these things. Um, I was fan funding way before Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, I remember hearing that Hall and Oates had fan funded a record like way back. Um, I think in the early two thousands and I thought that was a great idea. So I had put it out to my fan base. I had a, a record at the time called angels and demons. And I said, you know, if you want to be my angel, I'll put your name in the in the credits. You know, we'll do a CD release party for this much money. You can come to the studio. So this was way before Kickstarter. I never used a platform. The money just came straight to me, and that's how I funded my records up until the time I was signed. It was my fans, you know, paid in advance for autograph copies, for CD release parties, for access to the studio, um, all that kind of stuff. So. Wow. 
kind of, you know, I've, I've always kept my eyes and ears open to see what's going on out there. 